In the last lecture, we looked at methods to perform graphical synthesis of mechanisms. Starting from this lecture, we will study techniques for analyzing mechanisms. To evaluate a synthesized mechanism, we need to analyze it. A couple of methods that we mentioned for analyzing mechanisms was the use of transmission angles and ensuring that the links move between the given poses continuously. We will start with position analysis. From position analysis, we will move to velocity analysis. Then we will look at acceleration analysis and then we will look at analyzing the dynamic forces that arise in the mechanism as it moves. After force analysis is performed, usually stress analysis has to be performed. But stress analysis will not be part of this course. At the high level, there are two approaches for doing analysis. Graphical approaches and analytical approaches. Graphical approaches are intuitive, but they are limited in their application. Analytical approaches, on the other hand, they give you much more general solution. You have to use a coordinate system to represent the mechanism and position vectors associated with the pivots of the mechanism. Let's look at some fundamental background facts first. Consider the position vector of a point P. Let R be the length of the vector OP, where OP is the position vector of the point P, shown in blue here. The Cartesian form of this vector is r cos theta times i plus r sin theta times j, where i and j are the unit vectors on the x and y axis respectively. The polar form of the position of this point P is given by r and theta, where theta is the angle the line segment OP makes with the x axis and the angle is measured positive counterclockwise. The Cartesian form is the usual form of vector representation that you work with. However, in this class, we will look at an alternate representation of vectors using complex numbers. A vector in 2D or the position vector of a point in 2D or in the plane can also be represented using complex numbers. Again, let P be our point, which is shown by the blue dot here. OP is the position vector of point P. R is the length of OP or the distance of P from the origin. Using imaginary numbers, the Cartesian form of my vector OP is R cos theta plus J times R sin theta. R cos theta is the X component or the real component. And R sin theta is the Y component or the imaginary component. The polar form of this vector is R e to the power of J theta. This polar form may be something that is new to many of you. But this will be of importance to us for doing position and velocity and acceleration analysis. Again, remind yourself that r is the length of the vector op and theta is the angle made by this vector with the x-axis where the angle is measured anticlockwise positive. Note also that the angle will be measured at the root or at the tail of the vector and it does not depend where my point is located. By convention, I will always measure the angle positive anticlockwise. Therefore, if I have a point that is located in the fourth quadrant, suppose P is here, and I am interested in OP, I will measure the angle like this. I will not measure the angle in the clockwise direction. If I measure the angle in the clockwise direction, then I have to put a negative sign before it. To keep things simple, we will always measure angles positive counterclockwise and our angle will go from 0 to 2 pi. Now we can always go back and forth between the polar form and the Cartesian form using Euler's formula which says 
thus e to the power of j theta is cos theta plus j sin theta. Remember that I am using j as square root of minus 1 or the complex unit here. In many cases you may have seen i used. Since the Euler's formula will be of fundamental importance to us, we will first look at the derivation of Euler's formula. So we know that e to the power of x is defined by the infinite series of the form 1 plus x plus x squared by factorial 2 plus x cubed by factorial 3 plus x4 by factorial 4 and so on. Now substitute x equals to j theta. Then we get e to the power of j theta is 1 plus j theta plus 1 by factorial to j theta square and so on. Now we will use the fact that since j squared is minus 1, j cube will be minus j and j to the power of 4 will be 1, j to the power of 5 will be j and so on. So using this from j square theta square I get minus theta square. From j cube theta cube I get minus j theta cube. From j to the power of 4 theta to the power of 4 I just get theta 4. From j to the power of 5 theta to the power of 5 I get j theta 5 and so on. Now what we will do is collect the real terms and the imaginary terms. So what are the real terms here? 1 goes in here. This is a real term. This is a real term. So all the even powers here are real terms and then they go together. All the odd powers here are imaginary terms because they are pre-multiplied by j. So they are collected in one big term. Now you need to note this is the series expansion for cos theta and this is the series expansion for sine theta. Therefore, we obtain e to the power of j theta is cos theta plus j sine theta. This is an algebraic way of looking at the formula for e to the power of j theta. There is a geometric interpretation of this formula which will also be helpful to us. So let us try to understand the geometric interpretation. Let u be a unit vector with no imaginary component. It basically means u is the red vector shown here. In terms of algebra, u can be written as just 1 plus j times 0 and this is 0 but I am just writing it out explicitly. Now if we multiply u with e to the power of j theta, we will get cos theta plus j sine theta. And this multiplication here is a complex number multiplication. Now what is cos theta plus j sine theta? We know it is a vector which makes an angle theta with the x-axis or the real axis and whose magnitude is 1. In other words, it is the vector that can be obtained by rotating this unit real vector by an angle theta in the counterclockwise direction. So e to the power of j theta gives a unit vector obtained by rotating a real unit vector anticlockwise through an angle theta. Now rotating a vector by an angle alpha anticlockwise is same as multiplying it by e to the power of j alpha and vice versa. That is multiplying a vector by e to the power of j alpha is same as rotating the vector by the angle alpha anticlockwise. For example, let us look at the vector op. Let r be the length of the vector and theta be the angle the vector makes with the real axis. Then op equals to r e to the power of j theta. Now rotate the vector op to oq through an angle alpha in the counterclockwise direction. Then the magnitude of oq remains the same. Rotation does not change the magnitude of a vector and the angle that oq makes with the x-axis is now theta plus alpha. Therefore oq equals to r e to the power of j theta plus alpha which can be written as r e to the power of j alpha 
times e to the power of j theta. Now r e to the power of j theta is op, so which is same as writing e to the power of j alpha times op. Thus, the algebraic operation of multiplying a vector by e to the power of j alpha rotates the vector by the angle alpha. Now let us consider the case when alpha is equal to pi by 2 or 90 degrees. e to the power of j alpha becomes cos pi by 2 plus j sine pi by 2, which is just j. What this implies is that multiplying a vector by j is equivalent to rotating it by 90 degrees. Multiplying a vector by j square is then the same as rotating the vector by 180 degrees. Multiplying a vector by j cube is same as rotating the vector by 270 degrees. So let us now see how to use the complex number representation of vectors to obtain the position of a point on a planar rigid body. The figure here shows a planar rigid body and a blue point is shown on this rigid body. The reference frame W is the world reference frame and the reference frame B is a reference frame attached to the body. As we have discussed before, a rigid body in the plane has three degrees of freedom, which means that there are three independent parameters that you need to specify the position or pose of the rigid body. What are these three independent parameters? We said that the independent parameters would be the coordinates of the origin of the reference frame B and the angle theta that the x-axis of the reference frame B makes with the x-axis of the world frame or the real axis in this case. So let the length of OQ be small q. The angle phi denotes the angle the vector OQ makes with the real axis. Then Q and phi are the polar coordinates of the point Q. Theta gives the angle of the x-axis. So Q, phi and theta is a polar representation if I have to represent the vector OQ or the position of point Q in complex number form, it is given by Q e to the power of j phi, where Q is the length of OQ and phi is the angle as defined here. The superscript W represents the fact that OQ is given in the world frame. Now we also know the point P, which is the blue point here, in the body frame of the object or in the frame B. What does that mean? It means we know the length R and we know the angle the vector QP makes with the x-axis of the body frame, which is this angle alpha. And note here that I am measuring the angle positive anticlockwise from the axis XP. The vector QP in the world frame would be r e to the power of j theta plus alpha, where r is the length and theta plus alpha is the angle made by the vector QP from the x-axis of the world frame or the real axis of the world frame. Therefore, my position vector of P in the world frame, which is OP with superscript W, is OQW plus QPW, which is simply QE to the power of J phi plus RE to the power of J theta plus alpha. You can expand each one of these using Euler's formula and get the Cartesian form and get the two components out. There is one point that you should note here. I was writing QP in the world frame. 
because if I do not write QP in the world frame, I cannot add OQ and QP. To add two vectors, they have to be in the same frame. If I write QP in the body frame, QP in the body frame would be R e to the power of J alpha. Because in the body frame, alpha is the angle that is made with the body frame x-axis.